Well, good morning, everybody. Here we are on a Saturday morning, and a happy chore day for those of you who have the day off, and um, happy sleeping in day, and um, happy joyous day. Happy day. <laughs> it's a happy day. So uh, we're, we're reading through uh, Luke 22 and, and John 13, if I get the numbers right there. And um, yeah, it's a preparation for the cross. And uh, again, again, we're reading about the upper room. Uh, but what really stood out for me, there, there was a number of things, but the, the one thing I, I, I want to talk um, about this morning, the other things I'm going to, I have to pursue, um, but anyway, uh, is uh, it's concerning Judas. And, and we see that um, uh, in, in one verse it's talking about how Satan had been provoking Judas. And, uh, and then, then in another verse we see where um, after Jesus had, had dipped the bread um, in the sauce and the wine sauce and, and given it to Judas, that in that moment uh, Satan entered into Judas and Judas got up, left, and, and went to complete his, his betrayal of Jesus. Um, you got to wonder what happened because Jesus said that he, he knew those he called. And, and by saying that, uh, maybe you didn't understand this. Uh, some people may take that, that, that he knew those who would go all the way with him. Um, but Jesus knew who he called. He knew their faults. He knew the potential. That he knew the potential to fall away. He knew the potential to succeed. Um, he, he, didn't, he didn't make Peter deny him by telling Peter that he was going to deny him. It, it, was a, it was a prophetic thing where he was, he was forecasting. He was telling Peter what was going to happen. Because he, he knew the faults of Peter. He, he could see where the fault lines were and what was going to crack. Um, he looked at Judas and he could see the potential there. Ju Judas had the potential to succeed, but he also had uh, some faults there that gave him the, the potential to be the betrayer against Jesus. Does that mean others also had that potential and overcame that? Um, it, it's a good question. But, but whatever it was, Judas was given every opportunity that the others were given. Um, Judas was even there when, when Jesus was washing the feet. Jesus washed Judas's feet, even though the, there was going to be betrayal there. So it, it, it's, it, it's fascinating, really, at, at this point. Uh, we don't know why it was that, that it was Judas, but... Um, the enemy had been provoking him, so that fault line got, got um, bigger and bigger until that point where uh, it was big enough that, that, that Satan could en enter in and, and, and provoke him uh, to do what he did. And uh, we, when we look at this, it was a lot of dominoes that fell because of that. It, uh, it had a huge ripple effect. Um, thankfully, uh, the Father is one who uses everything for his plan. And, and knowing that all of the disciples had this potential, they had the potential there. Every one of them had this, this fault that they, they could have betrayed um, in this moment. Um, and it, it was Judas that, that, that fell into the trap. Uh, the Father knew this. And, and so he, was, um, he, he built this into his plan. Could it have been the fact that Judas was, was stealing from the, 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 the common purse? Did a demon enter in at that time and, and really provoke, provoke him? I'm sure the others were doing things that weren't very good either. I mean, we, when you look at some of the things that they did in the open, I wonder what some of the things that they were doing um, in, the, in the background. Uh, none of them were innocent, but um, did a demon enter in at that time and, and really torment and cause Judas not to be able to see what the other saw? Uh, darkened his vision, uh, blocked his ears so that he, he just didn't, he didn't get what the others got. Because if he got what the others got, he, he wouldn't have done what he did. So it's interesting. But it also reminds us that we have a huge responsibility. We have an obligation. But it's not just to ourselves, it's to everybody who's connected to us. Uh, because if, if we open the doors of demons um, by, by, by choosing to sin, and it's a choice because we don't have a sin nature anymore, so if we sin, it's by our choice. 
And there, listen, there's not enough demons around all over the place that, that when you sin, a demon automatically is going to attach to that sin and, and um, enter in. Uh, but there's a potential. There's a potential that a passing demon will be attracted by that sin and, and, and will attach uh, himself. And that's going to lead to all kinds of problems. So um, we have to be very careful because that won't just affect us, but that will affect everybody that's connected to us. It's, it's a ripple effect. We, we are integrated with other people. We're not, we're not an island. We don't stand alone. And people talk about, well, that's why he, he, he tries to take out pastors. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I would agree with that, but it's not just pastors. I mean, pastors do have a, uh, it would have a, a major impact, yes, but uh, so does a mother. So does a father. So do uncles and aunts. Uh, so do neighbors. Uh, these things they, they have a ripple effect you you, you look at um, you, you look at what happens in, in the United States when there's these these mass shootings and stuff that happen I, I mean the, the the city rises up and you know the the thing now is the to say the city's strong you know what whatever the name of the city is let's say Detroit Detroit's strong you know because they're, they're trying to push back against the insecurity that's that, that's what we do when we, when we become insecure. We try to find something uh, that will help us become um, secure. And uh, rhetoric doesn't always, always help. It, in fact, self-help never helps. Okay? Um, but um, there, when something like that happens, there's a, a sense of insecurity, a sense of everything's changed, a sense of nothing will be the same again, a sense of a loss of innocence and, and, and such. Um, if the neighborhood is always like that, and people get used to it, they're always in a sense of insecurity, anxiety. Uh, you're going to find bad health there because it affects the body and, and everything else. Uh, people won't think straight. And, but when it happens to a quiet neighborhood, man, you, you can really see uh, what happens. And, and hopefully they find healing for that. But this is, this is the effect as well. When, when we choose the sin, the the and it's a choice it's um the impact it has on others and it, it's good good to keep that in mind um you know it's good to go before the lord and ask him if there's any demons attached it's good to go before the lord and ask him if there's any lies that you're believing in that you've aligned yourself to it's good these are good things because we want to be healthy we want to be well we want to be whole in order to uh, impact the world. In the same way that our sin can impact in a devastating way, um, the righteousness that we live can also impact, will impact our entire neighborhood. So just some, some thoughts, some things to consider, some things to look at. And uh, listen, as you go through your day today, ask the Lord if there's somebody uh, that he wants you to talk to, if there's somebody that he has a word for. Um, do the crazy things that we're doing in the church or outside of the church. That's where it belongs, outside of the church. You be blessed, be encouraged, be just, yeah, be on fire uh, for the Lord today. Looking forward to gathering tomorrow for our worship. We're looking forward to um, Pastor Gordon be with us. Pastor Gordon and, and uh, Sinead be with us tomorrow. That's great. You <laughs> Bye. <laughs>